Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful that I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah with another lesson. In this time, we're going to go into the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and what he's coming to do when he returns, man. Um, because you still have the heathen down here, as we're going to show you right here in Psalms 2. They still believe that <laughs> they're going to uh, fulfill their enterprise. They believe that once the Lord, Yahweh Shai, returns, they're going to be able to take him down and just establish a kingdom <laughs> You see, under the vibration of Satan on the planet Earth forever, and that's not what's going to happen. See, Yahweh Shah is coming to collect his reward, man. He's coming to fulfill all that Yahweh has said he's coming to fulfill. And that includes what? That includes him coming to set up the kingdom of heaven on Earth, that kingdom will endure of righteousness. And he's going to take you heathen nations down, man. That's the only outcome. You heathen nations, you don't win. You're not going to be able to uh, fulfill this new world order of yours because Yahweh Shah is coming to upset all that, man. So this is uh, Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And this is what the heathen are doing down here. You see them making a, a stronger, powerful AI because they want AI to be the God. They want to establish a digital society where they put a, a RFID, CHIP in your body, which is the MOTB. You see? This is what the heathen want to do. They want all remembrance of the Most High erased from the earth. They want all that stand for righteousness to be put out of the earth this is the heathen raging man because the heathen they don't want to be up under the order of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah they want to be up under the, the, the vibration of Satan to just do whatever you want to do in the earth with no rules you see just living lawlessly and that's not going to happen you see because the most I said he created this earth for it to be ruled in a certain fashion and that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to establish, man. And there's nothing that these heathen can do to stop it. Now it goes on to say, verse 4, He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have, him in, have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his, in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. And this is what we're about to witness. The wrath, the judgment, you see, the anger of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah be brought down upon these heathen nations to upset all these plans that they have. You see that? And that's going to be done at the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah. Now verse 6 goes on to say, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, which is our Lord Yahweh Shah. I will declare the decree. Yahweh has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And this is the, an exchange that King David is talking about between the Most High and his son, Yahweh Shah, when he first created him. You see? It says, Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see, that's what's, prom that, that's, that's what's being promised to be given over to Yahweh Shah. This is what he's coming to collect. You see, because he came 2,000 years ago in the flesh to be a sacrifice for Israel, Fulfilling the Most High's will. Now he's back on the right hand side of the Most High. After being resurrected after the, after the third day. He's been brought into the fullness of his glory. 
You see? Now he's just waiting now to come and collect on everything that the Most High has promised him. That includes the entire planet Earth and everything in it, which includes you heathen nations. Yahweh Shah is coming back to rule over you, man. And there is nothing that you can do to stop it. <laughs> we see all your efforts that you're trying to take in the earth to try to stop this from coming to pass. But guess what? This has already been declared to come to pass from the beginning, man. And it has to be. Now, what does the Most High go on to tell you, Yahweh Shah? Verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a pot of vessel. Because what? You <coughs> you heathen nations are going to be given over into the hands of Yahweh Shai and to his people. You're going to be our possession in the kingdom of heaven. This is what our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming to collect on. You see? And this is just what's written in the scriptures, man. We're not making any of, uh, of this up. Yahweh Shai is coming to enslave you heathen nations. You see? As it was promised unto him from the heavenly father. See, these, these, these pagan Roman Catholic Christian anti-Messiahs, they don't believe in what's written, man. Because if you brought this up to Vocab alone, he'll deny this. But this is talking about you heathen nations going into slavery. And the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ is coming back to fulfill this. Let's show you. And not only did the most high promise, uh, Yahweh, not only did the most high promise this to Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah goes on to tell us in Revelation chapter 2. <laughs> Because we know and understand that we're going to be made co-heirs with him in his kingdom. As it tells you in the book of Romans chapter 8. If we suffer with Yahweh Shah and do all things for his name's sake. It tells us that he's going to make us co-heirs with us in his kingdom. So everything that he has received from the heavenly father as an inheritance. We're going to be partaking in that man. Which includes we the nations. Now it goes on to say, Revelation 2 and 25, it says, But that which ye have already hold fast till I come, that goes into our faith and our belief in his word. It says what? Verse 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. When? When the Most High first created Yahweh Shah in the beginning, that's what was promised unto him. Yahweh Shah is telling us right here that if we endure all things, he's going to give us the heathen foreign inheritance as well, just like he received from his father because we're going to be made co-heirs with him. Yahweh Shah is coming to fulfill all this, man. These words weren't just written just to sit on the pages and not be fulfilled. Everything that's written, it has to happen. You see? This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. He's coming to hostily take over the planet Earth, man. You see, because it belongs to him and his people anyway. You see this? So everything that you heathen nations are doing, <laughs> all this uh, uh, fervency that you're displaying to try to get this new world order uh, established, is all in vain, man. Matter of fact, let me show you that real quick. What is that, Job? Real quick, yup, 5 and 12, yup. This is uh, Job 5 and 12, it says, He disappointed the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And how is that going to be upset? It's going to be upset because according to the Most High's will, you heathen nations, beginning with you Edomites, you're going to lose. Now you're going to be able to establish a, a small portion of your little new world order, but it's going to be upset by our Lord Yahweh Shah when he returns. You see, because you think that you're going to cause all this chaos in the earth. You know, your, your motto, order ab chaos. You see, you're going to cause all this chaos and you're going to be able to bring order in by establishing this new world order. No, you're not. The Most High is about to show you that you have never been in control. All, all you have been doing is what the Most High created you to do. That's what it tells you in the book of 2 Thessalonians. Only he who now led of will let until he be taken out of the way. All you Edomites are doing. Right along with the rest of you heathen nations is, is, is what the Most High is allowing you to do until the what? Appointed time. That's it. And when it's all said and done, your hands are not going to be able to what? Perform your enterprise, man. 
Everything that you're doing is in vain. It's for nothing. And we're telling you before it even happens. Yahweh is coming to upset all your plans. It's not going to work out. You see how you heathen want it to work out? Because at the end of the day, that's not the most High's will. <laughs> for you to establish a full society, a uh, new world order under the vibration of Satan, man. Nah, man. <laughs> that shit is not going to happen. Now, we go here. Oh, so like you. Let's go here. Let's get uh Damn it. Oh yeah, yeah. Salakia. Revelation. Yup. This is Revelation chapter six, verse one. It says, And I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four be saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And that goes into a chariot. White representing pure, horse representing power. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. This is what the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to do. He's coming to conquer. He's coming to wage war against you heathen nations. He's not coming to uh, have all people join hand in hand as equals. He's coming to put his people on top as the supreme people, as we have been created to be by the Most High, and you heathen nations are going to be put under our foot. You see, as as the Lord comes to establish the throne of David, Yahweh Shah is coming to conquer. He's coming to wage war. You see, because it goes on to tell us in First Corinthians chapter fourteen and twenty four that what. Hold up. 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. Salah here. 1 Corinthians 15 and 24 tells us what? Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. This is what Yahweh Shah is coming to do. He's coming to take all power away from you heathen nations. Be what? Why? Because it's the end of your age. It's the end of the heathen age. And it ends with Esau. As it tells us in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of their follower. Esau is the end of the heathen having any type of power, authority, and rulership in the earth. And after this final heathen empire falls, the kingdom of heaven is going to be set up. You heathen will have no authority. You will have no power. You have no dominion. No say so in the earth. Once the Israelites are back in rulership upon our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? Verse 25 tells us what? For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. Do you see that? Who are the enemies that he's going to put under his feet? You heathen nations. This is what the Lord is coming to do. Why? Because he's coming, he's he's reestablishing the throne of David in the earth. Now, when you go read about the throne of David, what does it consist of? All 12 tribes being unified. Serving our power, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. And where do you heathen nations fall in line in that? You fall under the feet of the Israelites. This is what the Lord Yahweh Shah is coming to set up. You see? It goes on to say, verse 26, The last enemy sh that shall be destroyed is death, and death is going to be destroyed for the Israelites. When we bought into the fortress of that second covenant, we will never sin again, so that means we will never die again. You see, because sin is what brings forth death. Under the second covenant, we're going to be perfect in the law, statutes, and commandments. You see? We're going to be perfect in it, keeping it to perfection. That means we will never have to suffer the wages of sin, which is death, ever again. And that's going to be made possible through our Lord Yahweh Shah, right? Now, verse 27 goes on to say, For he hath put all things under his feet. But when, but when he saith, all things are put under him. It is manifest that he is expected that he is ex, ex, accepted, which did put all things under him. So Yahweh Shah is coming to put everything under his feet. The only thing that won't be under the uh, under Yahweh Shah is the heavenly Father Yahweh. Yahweh Shah is coming to establish that true order back in the earth, man. You see, while well, all things fall in line up under the Most High God Yahweh. Now, verse twenty-eight says what. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, 
Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that the Most High may be all in all. So you see, Yahweh Shah is coming to put everything back in his natural order. You see, and it, and, it, and it begins with you heathen nations being taken down and being put in, in your rightful place up under the feet of the Israelites. This is just what it is, man. This is the truth of the matter. You can feel however you want to feel about it. This is the truth of the Bible. This is the Most High's will. This is what's playing out. You see? This is what's playing out. Now, we go here. And this is one of my favorites to go into, Revelation 19. Yep. The coming of Mashiach, right? Now, it tells, it tells us. <laughs> it says, Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. There it is again. That white horse represents what? The chariot. White represents pure horse, represents power. This is how our Lord Yahweh is coming back. It tells us in Revelation 1 that what? Behold, he come up with clouds. What are these clouds? These clouds are so-called UFOs, which are actually the chariots of the Lord. And, the, and Yahweh is coming back with an armada. Yahweh and the heavenly angels will flood the, the, they will flood the skies with these vehicles. And every eye is going to see him. Not that bullshit you've been told in that pagan Roman Catholic Christian church about a damn rapture of, of it happening. The Lord coming back in the middle of the night and no one knows he's coming. Nah, that's not what the Bible says, man. Revelation 1 and 7 says what? Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, so let it be. So the, the entire world is going to witness the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? Now, Esau and his mainstream media is, is going to try to spin it as if it's some type of alien invasion. But no, it's just the second coming. You see? It's Yahweh Shah coming back to take his throne. That he's rightfully earned by being obedient to the Most High's will even unto death. You see? The world is going to witness this, man. Even hey, and, and, and another point to be made, this also shows reincarnation because it says the ones that pierced Yahweh Shah when he was on that cross 2,000 years ago, they are here. And they're going to witness the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah. That proves, that's another point to prove reincarnation. But this is what it's going to be. Now we go back to Revelation 19. In 11 it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He's judging. He, he, why is he coming to judge and make war? Because that, this is how the age of the heathen end. With one realm fighting against another realm. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the heathen nations, you're going to lose. There's nothing that you can do to stand up against Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is the second most powerful being after the Most High. There's nothing, there's nothing that you can do to stand before him. You have nothing that you, you have nothing going for you to make your house shot fear in any type of way or for him to be stressed or worried about what you heathen have. Not. Nah, man, he's not worrying about none of that shit. He's going to come and make easy work of you heathen nations in your militaries, man. He ain't even going to break a sweat. That's how easy it's going to be. That's how powerful he is. So he's coming to do what? He's coming to, uh, and in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. You see that? Verse 12 says what? His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. Why are there many crowns? Because he's coming to take all authority and dominion and rulership and power away from you heathen. Just like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The heathen will have no more say so. They won't be able to establish no more laws and legislation. They're going to fall upon the order of the Israelites. There ain't gonna be no more crowns for the heathen nations. Your time of ruler your time of ruling is over with. You see? We are hey, we're watching the sun set on the age of the heathen having any type of power, authority, and dominion in the earth, man. And, and call her law Yahweh about Shemi Shah. So it goes on to say Revelation nineteen and twelve, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And that goes into the rank that he has. And that rank is only known in the heavens and amongst us. 
who are in the know. And he, because these people don't respect Yahweh Shah and the rank that he's earned by being obedient to the Most High's will, they don't understand his power, his glory, his might. You see, and, that, and how do we know this? Because when we talk about Yahweh Shah, you see how the people frown up and they just got some shit to say. You see, his, his, his rank is not respected down here on the earth. You see, but hey, the time is going to come where, where you are going to see the power and authority of our Lord, man. You see, he's coming back on the level. He's coming back. Oh, as he told us, he said, he says, what? I will not meet thee as a man. He's coming back on a completely different level. man. He's coming back as a, a angelic force. To make easy work of you heathen nations, man. Verse 13 says what? And he had and he was clothed with a white and he was clothed and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of the most high. And the armies which were in heaven which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, which once were, goes into those chariots again. Once again, white representing pure, horse representing power, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And these and that this is talking about the angels. Because Yahweh Shah is not coming back on some low-level type of thing, man. Yahweh Shah is coming back, <laughs> hey, as a king should. He's coming back deep, man. He's coming back in a gigantic chariot. And you're going to have angels and, and, and big chariots coming back, rolling up on the earth. To, to get things back in order, man. This is where everything is leading. Every day that passes by, we're another day closer to this, man. Now it goes on to say, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You see that? This is what Yahweh Shah has promised us, man. He's going to rule you heathen nations with a rod of iron. What does that go into? It goes into Rabdos. Strong's G, 4464. Rabdas. Rabdas. Right? And it goes to say what? When you get to the context of how the uh, word is being used, it says what? When applied to kings with a rod of iron indicates the severest, most rigorous rule. Because Yahweh Shah is coming to put you heathen nations into slavery. This is a part of his inheritance. And this is a part of what we're going to inherit. The heathen nations as a possession. This is not a joke. This is not a game. This is not words to, to, to just sit on pages, man. This is what's going to be fulfilled. You heathen nations are going to be shackled and chained, and you're going to be in servitude unto the Israelites. As it tells Isaiah 14, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You can't just gloss over that. That's that that's said. That's written. That's what the Most High has spoken. That's a part of his will. It has to be fulfilled. Ain't no getting around it. You heathen nations are going to, into slavery once your Howard Shah returns. You see? And we can't wait. It says, and, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. And that goes into what's said in Isaiah 63. Real quick, let's get that real quick to show you what type of timing Yahweh Shah is coming back in. Or what he's coming back on. This is Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. It says, Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is our Lord Yahweh Shah returning. You see? Glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. That, that talks about the power and glory that Yahweh Shah is coming back into the earth with. You see? And he's going to make a beeline straight for America, Babylon the Great. It goes in to say, verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have tried in the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. This is talk this is Yahweh Shah talking about what? Casting judgment into the earth, especially here in the land of America. America is the wine press, and you people are the grapes. They tell you how Shah is coming back to what? Judge and righteousness, man. He's not coming back on some low-level uh, peace for all people type of deal, man. 
Yahweh Shah is coming to put a lot of people to death. It tells us this. It tells us this. Matter of fact, yeah, Isaiah 66. Yeah. Real quick, where is that? Isaiah 66. And 15, it says, For behold, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. This is this is how the Lord is coming back. Where are you getting this notion that he's coming back on some, some fun-loving peace trip? No, man. Yahweh Shah is coming to slay a lot of people. He's coming to judge in righteousness. And there is nothing but wickedness going on here in this earth, especially in Babylon, America. And these people really think that there is no consequence for that. You're, you're sadly mistaken, man. Yahweh Shah is about to slay and slaughter a lot of people. Verse 15 says what? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead, which goes into judge, with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Do you hear that? This is what's coming, man. The slain of the Lord is going to be many. Many. A lot of people are about to die once Yahweh Shah returns, man. And that's what this Isaiah 63 is talking about. A lot of people, especially here in the land of America, is going to, they, they're going to receive judgment from the Lord, man. Verse 4 tells us what? Isaiah 63 and 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. So Yahweh Shai is in the spirit to redeem his elect from all throughout the earth, and and one third from here, uh, and the one third here from America. And you people are going to be punished for the harm that you're trying to bring unto the men of the Lord, unto the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Verse 6 tells us what? And I will tread them, and I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. So all this New World Order talk, this fourth industrial revolution bullshit, it's all gonna be bought down, man. You see, that's why we don't have to, that's why we have to stick to what's written. Fuck what, what fuck what Esau talking about. Yeah, we see what he's doing, but we understand how it's gonna play out. We know the outcome. Yahweh Shah is coming to take this man down. You see, and, and, and revoke his authority in the earth, man. These people are not finna fulfill this bullshit they're trying to do. Yeah, we see the we see what they're doing, but we understand how it all plays out. They lose. There's no other outcome. And it tells you this all throughout the scripture, man. The wicked are going to lose, and the righteous are going to prevail, man. There's no there's nothing other than that that are uh, written. There's nothing other than that written, man. Just watch. Yahweh Shah is coming back to shut all this shit down, and he's coming to establish a righteous kingdom in the earth according to his, according to what's written, according to what the Most High has spoken, man. You see? So we don't have to fret and worry about what the fuck Esau is doing. Yeah, we see. Yeah, we see this devil. We understand and know why he's doing it, why he's doing what he's doing, and we understand and know that his ass is going down as the Most High has spoken, man. And so with that, man, I'm going to end up by giving all praise, all honor, all glory. Matter of fact, did I finish that Revelation 19? Oh, yeah, I got to finish that. Salakia. Uh, Revelation 19 to 16, it says, And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that's what it is. That's the end all be all right there. Our Lord Yahweh Shah coming to do it, to, to reign in the earth as promised. Nothing other than that, man. It's not going to play out how Esau expects it to play out. It's going to be everything that we have been saying through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. With that, I'm going to end up by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of a great millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of that I out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba, Abba.